What is paradise? Is it a beautiful landscape? Is it crystal clear blue water? Is it good weather and smooth sailing? We've been living and traveling on a sailboat for some time now, and I don't think we've ever experienced so much beauty as we have here in Mallorca. Wow, I feel like we've arrived in paradise. But someday, when we look back on this experience, the thing I'll remember most is getting to share it with some old friends who have also traveled a long way to be here. <laughs> Reunion. So as we stage for what should probably be our final passage to Malta, where we plan to pop out a baby, we decide to take a couple of days to enjoy this Mediterranean paradise. Buddy, you look so beautiful. Yeah. Oh my God, now you look even more beautiful. I'm learning on TikTok. Yeah. You have to tuck your lips. Yeah. And separate your mouth a little bit. Do you look beautiful? You kind of look like you had a stroke. <laughs> Man, I don't think I've ever traveled along a coastline with so many people boating and experiencing the water in different ways. There's paddle boarders, kayakers, motorboats that are fishing, motorboats that are just cruising, there's sailboats. It's just chock full of people. And I see why it's super beautiful here. I mean, the water is this really beautiful blue. The way the light's shimmering off of it with zero waves, it's just like a lake out here. Giant cliffs, green hills. I feel like it's just that the cat's out of the bag. I think a lot of people know about it. Man, it is not every day that I've got to look almost straight up to see the coastline go by. <laughs> it's so grand, you know? All right, here's the moment where we find out how many boats are in this anchor. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's not bad. I thought there'd be around 30. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, fingers crossed, this might not be terrible. Terribly crap. I mean, terribly crap, right. <laughs> this is so stunning, it's just nuts. It's kind of hard to tell what the bottom is here because it's so deep, but to me it looks like sand. I'm gonna go around this sailboat and then drop it right about where we are now. Mike, would you mind if we anchor between you guys? No, no, no. That's okay? No worries. We'll be between this boat and that sailboat over there. So we'll kind of drop it right here. Looks like it could be a good spot. So I really love cooking fish and I am super excited because I recently got this Kamikoto Ryoshi fish knife set. Kamikoto knives are super sharp and make cooking so much more fun. They're made from high quality Japanese steel using traditional techniques and each knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. Hey, that's not for you. Come on, get down. It is time. Oh. Sensei, you scared me. It is time to continue your training. Okay, what do you want me to do? In order to become a warrior, you must be agile. So you will use the knife of Kamikoto to catch a fish. <sighs> Sensei, this is never gonna work. You must have patience to become a true warrior. Now, Kamikoto is running a massive sale right now and is offering Project Atticus viewers an extra $50 off any purchase. So head on over to kamikoto.com slash Atticus and use promo code Atticus to get your hands on these awesome knives. And a special thanks to Kamikoto for sponsoring this video. Wow. I feel like we've arrived in paradise. I mean, there's a lot of people enjoying paradise together. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but we gotta share the wealth. Yeah. Really? 
the baby. Hey, buddy. Where are we going, huh? Wow, he is a lot more comfortable in the water I know. now. Is it just me or does it look exactly like an otter? Yeah, he does. Good job, baby. Very good. Also has been in the water. Whoa. He's always gone in the water, mostly to chase a ball. If it's really hot and we're next to a pond or a lake, he might jump in on his own. He's never gotten to a point where he'll swim in the open ocean for fun. <laughs> and so we're trying to get him to be cool with that. So we're gonna try to get him to swim out to Desiree and then swim back to me on command, and then I'll give him some treats if he does that. Go to Desiree. He's, he's thinking about it. He's not sure. Also come. Very good, good job, buddy. What a good boy. Yeah, okay, back to Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Up here, buddy. I know you can do it. It's not that hard. So done being real active and doing stuff outside it's real fun doing it obviously but I think one of my favorite things is being tired after you know having that feeling of, uh, that you spent your day really well it's not a mindset that I find myself in very often so moments like right now I really enjoy you know made gnocchi with manchego cheese and a tomato sauce. This is definitely my favorite day that I can remember for a long time. A lot of the cruising we've been doing hasn't been real beautiful nature-y anchorages. Mm -hmm. They've either been marinas mm -hmm. in civilization or anchorages that are in civilization, you know. Today and tonight, mm -hmm. this is where we live, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think about that, mm -hmm. it's cool. <laughs> we got Oso's nighttime adventure leash on. <laughs> so no Oso left behind. <laughs> yeah, this is cool. We're just walking in the middle of this giant canyon. It's cool being in a place like this at this time. Reminds me of when we were at the top of Pico, just giant cliffs all around us on either side, but it's kind of eerie almost, but in a cool way, not in a I want this to end way. Do you remember this, bud? I do. That's funny. I think I took a picture around right here I was like doing something like this. <laughs> oh yeah, we come back here. Yeah, this is such a trip, man. Yeah, it does feel like the air in here is cooler and it's kind of funneling through the tunnel. Right here, it literally feels like air conditioning. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. It's cold air. That's so pretty. Well, it is time for us to say goodbye 
to what has potentially been the most beautiful anchorage that we've ever been to. And we're gonna head off to an anchorage at the port of Poyensa. And we're heading there because it's got really good protection. It's the closest anchorage to Malta. So we'll basically be staging to make our final departure from Mallorca. And also because our friends Dan and Kika from Sailing Uma are over there. So we wanna go hang out with them for a little bit. Yeah, it's gonna be so cool because the last time we saw them was in Isla Mujeres, Mexico, five years ago, something like that. And I'm sure none of us imagined that the next time we would see each other would be on this side of the Atlantic. So that'll be cool to catch up with them. Otherwise, it's a beautiful day. And it looks like we should be able to get some sailing in today because uh, the winds are supposed to pick up a little bit. So yeah, let's head off. Well, we're rounding Formentor, which is the northeast point of Mallorca. The wind is turning around the point so that as we make progress around the point, the wind keeps staying right in front of us. So we're just gonna have to kind of ride that wind shift until we can finally tack over. It's gonna just add a lot of time to our trip today, but no big deal. How you feeling, bud? Good, yeah, I'm surprised. I'm not feeling seasick. Nice. Maybe it's because we've been on the move so much. I think so. I think the Atlantic crossing was tough because of my pregnancy and also because we hadn't sailed extensively in kind of rough weather for at least a year leading up to that. Man, can you believe we lived like this for, what was it, four days on the <laughs> crossing? I don't want to think about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's intense when your whole world is healed over. The whole boat's closed up because, you know, water would just get into any opening. So it's hot in here, it's stuffy. We're sailing about 50 degrees to the wind, which means we tack through about 100 degrees. So we've got to make sure that when we turn to the right 100 degrees, that we're going to clear the point of the island. Cool, so we're gonna clear the point by a lot. We probably could attack a little earlier, but better safe than sorry when it comes to running into giant cliffs. All right, well, we finally got in the lee of the peninsula to the south of us. And so things are starting to calm down and I mean, it's getting downright pleasant again. Just kind of watching the beautiful Mallorcan coastline. We made it, buddy. We made it. And for some reason, I'm so sleepy today. <laughs> so I'm giving a half effort at playing with Oso, but he's giving 130%. <laughs> well, we'll be able to take him for a walk here in a minute because we're going to go out to dinner with bum, 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 Dan and Kika. I'm so excited about this anchorage because it's huge. Boats aren't piled on top of each other. I think it's the one anchorage in Mallorca that's like this. So lots of freaking space. Oh, I love it. If we were in the Caribbean and we anchored this distance from somebody, I'd be very concerned that we were encroaching on their space. But after so year and the Azores, that feels very far away. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Kika? Oh my goodness, it's Kika! Yeah! We're being spoiled here. We got delicious frothy lattes. How frothy? So frothy. Dude, the <laughs> word froth is so gross because that's what we say Oso does to his butt. <laughs> yeah, oh my he just froth his butt. <laughs> Get away from my froth, frother. <laughs> we'll never drink coffee the same way again. <laughs> Alright guys, you guys don't get to see what's in the box. <laughs> oh. Oh. These are like the ham and cheese ones. Oh, you got oh, savory too. Oh, dang. Yes. A pastry feast. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Aromaticus reunion. 
2022. It's a short one this time. We yeah. need to do a proper reunion. I like, know, after in a baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think next time we do something together when we meet up in Malta, we'll take over your vlog and you'll take over oh, our vlog. That's a good idea. You'll have to sail this boat. Yeah. And we'll have and to we'll sail, your sail your baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, we get a dog and a baby and you guys get vacation? Yeah, that's oh, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Here's a pacifier, don't lose it. <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna get to go on a really cool adventure with Dan and Kika on Sailing Uma. We're gonna go check out a narrow little bay that's supposed to be really pretty to the northeast of us. But before we go, real quick, I've got a project that I wanna do, and that is I wanna put another zinc on our prop. A couple of days ago when we were diving under the boat, I realized that the zinc on our prop had completely corroded away. After we had the issue with our prop back in North Carolina, I bought six replacement zincs just because I wanted to never have that issue again. And here we are needing another zinc really soon after we put one on. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Those zincs are obviously decaying really prematurely, but fact is, I've got a spare one here and I'm gonna go down and put it on. The problem being, it's underwater. So I'm gonna have to do the whole operation while holding my breath, snorkeling. A little bit less than ideal, but I'm sure I can make it happen. So the next thing that I've got to do is I want to clean the solar panels. Actually, when it rains here, there's a kind of a red or orange dust that's in the rain. And so if you look at the solar panels, you can see when that rain dries, it just leaves a ton of dust. And it really messes with the solar panel's ability to produce electricity. So real quick, I'm gonna just wipe these solar panels off. All right, See you out it. there. Bye. Your boat's leaking. <laughs> it's smoking too. Well, we were gonna get underway using the engine just like we always do to sail to this bay with Dan and Kika, but they just sailed off the anchor, and so we feel like we gotta be cool like them and <laughs> sail off the anchor. Let's do it. All right. Let's go sailing. Let's do it. Okay, heads up. I'm gonna bring the head sail out. This is great sailing. Lots of wind and zero waves. Now if we could just catch up to Uma, then I'd be happy. You want to see Danny Kika? Yeah. Well, we gave up on the race. We weren't gonna catch up to them. They were nice enough to slow down or turn around and we kind of sailed hand in hand into the anchorage. It was very romantic. All right, looks like we're heading into this collar right up ahead. It looks pretty narrow and teeny, so hopefully there'll be just enough room for a couple of boats. When I was researching coming to the Balearic Islands, this is a popular thing, coming to a cala, a narrow kind of slot canyon in the ocean. And I had thought, boy, how do you anchor somewhere where you have barely enough swinging room? But the thing is, you never get wind coming from the cliffs. You get wind coming from either that side of the valley, so to speak, or the cala, or from the open side. The wind funnels through the canyon. So basically, you just have to have swinging room to go that way or to go that way. So the mindset is different, which is interesting. We're going on a trip. Woo! Just like, I'm so confused. <laughs> That's a nice view. It really is. Oh, yeah. so you can do we it. You can do it. Just get up to where no, Dan is. Show Kika how to do it. Right? 
Start commenting I'm, gonna, on that. I'm gonna have to put music on top of all of this. <laughs> Voice over. And then we went on a hike with Kika and Dan. It was so enjoyable. <laughs> Nobody said anything inappropriate, I promise. <laughs> Everybody left. Man, I'm just poking up my head one last time before I go to bed, and it is crazy to just hear the water hitting the cliffs on either side of us really close, and to look over and just see these big cliffs right next to us, and we're just floating along here at anchor is a feeling I am not used to. <laughs> I'm used to, when I'm at anchor, being far away from things like cliffs. 